that should be high enough now. You can all hear me. Yeah, I think that's good. Right, I'll um, be talking about the MODHT project, which stands for Monitoring of Damage in Historic Tapestries. And I will um, specifically focus on one topic, which is the finding of microanalytical markers of damage. MODHT ran for three years, between 2002 and 2005. It's a collaborative research project uh, between seven partners from the European Union, um, most of them from the UK, one from Belgium, one from Spain. Um, the project really um, focused on the chemical identification of uh, markers of damage, or oh, that's the topic of today. Mm. We've talked a lot in this conference about visual damages in tapestries, uh, such as fading, falling out of weft yarns or frayed borders. But what, what we were really concentrating on was the, um, the invisible markers, the physical chemical degradation that you cannot see what's going on really on the um, micro level in degradation of silk and wool. More specifically, the objectives were the assessment of the condition of wool and silk fibers, the identification of dyes, mordants, uh, characterization of metal threads, and also art historical research. Today, I'm only really going to talk about wool and silk fibers. We undertook three sampling campaigns from the collections from Spain, Belgium, and the UK. All the, the historic samples that we took were meticulously marked, photographed, uh, measured, and finally removed. We sampled 17 different tapestries. Uh, just to emphasize, about 600 samples were taken. And the, the tapestries ranged from the early 15th century to the mid 17th century. This is just an overview of all the techniques that we applied to the analysis of wool, and I will not go into detail. The only techniques that I'm going to talk about today are amino acid analysis, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, and infrared spectroscopy. As these were the techniques that we found most useful as, a, as markers of damage, and I'll explain why later. For silk, again, we used a whole host of techniques. The two techniques I'm going to talk about today is amino acid analysis and size exclusion chromatography. Before we analyzed any of the historic fibers, or before we subjected any of these historic fibers to um, chemical analysis, we optimized all the techniques and tested them on model fabrics. And this slide shows uh, an overview of how these fabrics were produced from winding hanks. Oops, sorry. Winding hanks from cones, uh, dyeing the hanks with historic dye recipes, winding the hanks back into cones, making the warp, and finally producing the fabric on a loom. And we achieved quite a close structure to original tapestries, which was almost a research project in itself, how to weave a, um, a tapestry structure on a mechanical loom. In total, 42 differently dyed uh, fabrics were woven. They were all then subjected to accelerated light aging to the equivalent of 400 years museum lighting. All models were tensile strength tested in the form of fabrics, um, yarns, and single fibers. And from all the, uh, the different parameters that you can analyze by tensile strength testing, such as the initial modulus, the yield point, or the, uh, init the final break point of um, overall stress and strain at break, we found that the strain, so the, the elongation and percent, was the, the one parameter that varied the most consistently and showed the greatest variation between the aged and the unaged fibers or yarns. Um, so that's the one we then went with and correlated or tried to correlate to the results from all the chemical data, chemical analysis. And again, just to emphasize for the wool and for silk, these are the techniques that we found most useful. And I will show a very brief, well, show briefly a slide for each one of these techniques without, to go, without going into any detail of how they work. I will only explain or very briefly show which parameter from these techniques we chose as markers of damage. 
in amino acid analysis, which was chosen for wool and silk, or proved very useful for both wool and silk. It's the keratin oxidation factor. Oops. All right, over here. That was chosen as a marker of damage for wool and for silk. It was the overall level of tyrosine. X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, which is uh, a surface technique. We tracked the, um, the oxidation state of sulfur, which really shows how the, uh, the amino acid cysteine and cysteine, so these two amino acids, convert into cysteic acid. And also, very similar approach, although completely different technique. It was the cysteic acid level, which is here. Uh, the development of this peak was uh, tracked with FTIR spectroscopy. Size exclusion chromatography, was, which was exclusively used for silk, is a measure of the uh, molecular weight distribution. And a very useful marker of damage is the high over low ratio, so the fraction of high molecular weight to low molecular weight, low molecular weight which um, really tracks how the protein chains become shorter as the cell ages. I'll show these graphs now um, for each, for the wool and for the silk. This is the wool, the three techniques, amino acid analysis, XPS, and FTIR. Each one plotted against um, the measure elongation. And you can see for each one, for each technique, how they quite nicely separate out the unaged from the aged uh, model fibers. So the unaged is always the dark blue, and the accelerated aged is the light blue. Now, of course, we, on these graphs now, we could not plot the historic data because we don't have the elongation for the fabrics. We don't have any tensile tests for it. We can't actually do tensile tests on whole tapestries because it would mean ripping them apart. Um, therefore, what we, uh, what we do or what we then to validate these techniques is uh, combining at least two chemical, at least the, the data from at least two chemical analyses. And this one shows, for example, the, uh, the combination of amino acid analysis and XPS. And the historical wool is marked in orange, and you can see how it's following a trend, and the, the historic fibers are even further degraded than our accelerated aged models. But they're going on the same trend. This was also observed if you plot FTR against XPS values. And don't be confused if sometimes the graph goes up, sometimes it goes down. That's simply because Depending on what the marker of damage is, sometimes the higher value is, means more degradation or the lower value means more degradation. So, um, Plotting FTIR, FTIR um, the cystic acid level against the amino acid co coefficient of, um, sorry, keratin oxidation factor against one another. Um, we can see here the, the unaged, the accelerated age, and the historic wall even further down the line. We zoom in on just on the historic wall, and then plot them by, um, or separate them out by tapestry. So these are all the codes for the different tapestries. And then only look at the Spanish tapestries. You can see clearly two groups here. And they, the, the green, green brown group is, um, the, they're all tapestries from the fables of uh, Ovid series, which by conservators were classed in a, as a superior condition. And the others are um, far removed on the plot, further degraded according to the chemical analysis, and this exactly correlates also with the, um, the condition assessment by conservators, which were classed as regular or bad condition. We can take the same approach for silk. The, um, the graphs show the two, uh, the two, oops, sorry, the amino acid analysis, um, MOPs and tyrosine, and the size exclusion chromatography, the high-low level, plotted against elongation. If we then combine these two, we can also plot the historic samples. And again, you can see they're further down the line compared to our degraded samples, our artificially degraded samples. We zoom in on them, 
and then separate out just two tapestries from Hampton Court. Again, they separate quite nicely, and the chemical data correlates with the condition assessment done by conservators. The triumphs of Petrarch were classed as very poor condition, and the um, story of Tobias as weak. So this really just shows that um, overall, in, with these technique, we, with these techniques, we're able to um, to um, to find market to, to define chemical markers of damage, which can uh, which can improve uh, condition assessment, or really, or help a condition assessment that's done by conservators. Obviously, if, if we know something is in a, in a poor state, then you could ask, well, why put numbers to it? But it's, the, it's being able to compare different tapestries to one another, or even to monitor a tapestry over a long time that we can, we can do with chemical analysis. Um, overall, during these three years, we've refined a lot of the uh, chemical analysis to down to really tiny samples. So for the amino acid analysis, you need maybe two millimeters of a yarn or even less. For XPS, you only need, a, I don't know, three fibers. Um, and we've also shown that the accelerated light aging produces valid models, which was not clear from the outset of the um, of the the uh, project because we took the samples from the back of the tapestries where they did not receive any light. But we've shown that the, what happens to them chemically is actually exactly the same. So thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me to this conference. I'd like to thank all the MODHT partners and of course the um, funding from the European Union.